We are just getting some crazy fires here in Oregon. Whoa. Pretty sure that I just jinxed everything by saying that life might be going back to normal now. It is the first day of September and I am on my way to pick up my baby ducklings. Thank you. Oh my goodness, hello. I'm gonna be your mommy. Though we're not together, I will always remember the gentle times we shared one fine September day. away until I kiss that autumn rain oh autumn rain oh autumn rain kiss my pretty face again autumn rain oh autumn rain slap my pretty face again September means the beginning of fall, which is my favorite. In August, I really tried to enjoy the summer to the fullest, and hopefully that was reflected in my August vlog. I feel like I have been slowly kind of getting back to my normal, or rediscovering what my normal is, and I know I'm not alone in that. I know COVID really threw off pretty much everybody, and we are all scrambling to find what our new normal is and how to be productive now that life is different than it was at the start of the year. With fall looming on the horizon, that means my birthday is also looming on the horizon. The time of reckoning has come because in the year 2020, instead of doing a New Year's resolution, I did a birthday resolution. This year I'm turning 30. I feel like 30 is a significant milestone in a person's life because you're an adult, there's no questioning it anymore, you better have your act together, I don't know, <laughs> that's how I feel about it. I used to think 30 was old, now that I am almost 30, of course, it seems significantly younger than it used to seem. I will no longer be in my 20s and I would like to be able to say on my 30th birthday that I have accomplished something. And so I made some goals at the beginning of the year that I wanted to have accomplished by my birthday. My birthday is at the beginning of November, so I'm kind of running out of time. But one of my goals was that I wanted to be in the best shape of my life. <laughs> yeah. To me, what that meant was things like being able to touch my toes for longer than just like a bounce or two. I'm not a very flexible person and it's always been a struggle to be able to touch my toes and I can usually do it from side to side or for a few seconds facing front, um, but I wanted to be able to do it effortlessly, I guess. Another thing, I think I said I wanted to run five miles straight because I've never been able to run five miles straight. So right now, if you saw my Tried Riding Like Sylvia from Ride Your Life video, I mentioned that I've been trying to prepare to run a half marathon with my sisters and my mom. It's been over a week since my last run, so I'm getting behind and I need to play catch up. I am not a runner. It's a big deal to me that I'm running at all. I know that I can get myself to be able to run five miles straight from now to November. I know I can do that if I really push myself and I feel like that will be worth it because I want to, on the day that I turn 30, be able to be like, yeah, I met some goal. I'm 30 and I've never been able to run five miles before, but right now I'm in the best shape of my life because I just ran five miles. It doesn't mean that I have to be the skinniest I've ever been. It just means that I need to be able to do something physically that I haven't been able to do before as a result of training or really, you know, really pushing myself. 
So that's what I'm gonna try to do. You should be able to tell by my August vlog that I haven't done really any writing for like a month. Pretty much ever since Camp NaNoWriMo ended in July, I've written twice. And I was starting to feel really sad about that the last couple of days, just as I've been analyzing, like, why haven't I been writing? What's the holdup for me? And I really think it comes down to, I'm just so burnt out from all the writing I've been doing for school that it makes me not want to write with my leisure time. It makes me want to play with my ducks and the baby squirrels and the goats and just like there are so many other great things I've got going on in my life that I'm more excited about right now than I am about writing and I really think it boils down to I'm just burnt out of writing from school which begs the question am I studying the right thing is it right for me to study English when I don't enjoy writing if I'm writing it for somebody else that tells me I don't think I would want a writing job, which I've already felt that way in the past, but I'm at work now. So we're gonna pick up this conversation a little bit later. Mandatory evacuations are underway with residents being told to leave immediately. Fire officials say this wildfire season is unlike anything that state has seen in recent memory. We are just getting some crazy fires here in Oregon. The sky is just orange and murky. A lot of people are evacuating around where we are. Nobody like in the city where I live, but kind of the surrounding cities are being evacuated. And yet people are still golfing, of course. Okay, so it is the next morning. Pretty sure that I just jinxed everything by saying that life might be going back to normal now. I'm supposed to be leaving for work. It's almost nine o'clock in the morning and it is so dark. I don't, I don't know if you can even tell by this video, but it is so dark that it looked like it was the middle of the night when I woke up. My room is like pitch black almost. There's just this faint red glow coming through the windows and so it literally looks like hell outside. We're having an unprecedented fire warning here in Oregon and some of my neighbors had to evacuate. Some friends of ours who live in the same city as us had to evacuate last night and we were ready to evacuate. My sister took her two kids and went to my other sister's house in Washington. We were all set to go. So at like midnight, we had everything packed in the cars, ready to leave. All we had to do was pack up all the animals because you can bet we weren't gonna leave all of our animals. So we had all these boxes and crates for all the chickens, the quail, the rabbits, the ducks, the cat, the dogs, <laughs> and the goats. We had it all arranged, which animals were going in which cars. Then at like one in the morning, just before we were about to herd all the goats into the truck, police department said that our area was gonna be okay and that the fire had been contained. And so we stayed the night here, but now I'm trying to decide if I should go to work today because the fires still aren't totally contained and anything can happen. Fires are unpredictable. So we still probably need to be ready to leave at a moment's notice. And I don't want to leave with the car and then get a number three level fire alert that we have to get out and then have to come back here, you know? So it's just kind of weird. Everything is just red and orange. It's just this crazy year, I tell you what. So we're going on day three now of this kind of hazy yellowness. It's not as bad as it was the other day. You can't really tell with the lighting right now, but when I look out my windows, everything is yellow and it's weird because when you look back at the house it looks like all the lights inside the house are blue my nephews are all giving me a fond send off to work this morning get out of the way so now today it looks like it's snowing lightly but it's not snow it's ash so now we're getting ash falling from the sky which i knew was going to happen because I have friends who live a little bit closer to the fire and they've had ash falling since yesterday. We have not needed to evacuate, which is great, but we're still ready. Like if we need to up and leave, my car is packed right now with all of our things that we would need in an emergency evacuation. And we have crates for the ducks and for Simon sitting by our bedroom door. So if in an instant, we needed to leave, we could just throw them in their crates, toss them in the car and go. People always ask, you know, what would you grab in a fire? What is the most important thing to you? What are your priceless valuables? And in the moment when we thought we were gonna have to evacuate two nights ago, that was our moment. 
to stop and be like, okay, we're leaving tonight, right now. What do we grab? What will we regret leaving behind? And in that moment, it's hard to think of like, okay, what do I have that I would want to leave behind? Honestly, in that moment, it just feels like I don't care about anything except for my life and the lives of those that I love. And in my mind, I was like, let's just get in the car and go. Like, as long as we have our animals and our family members, we'll be fine. Everything else is just stuff. And we can live without stuff. Patrick was like, okay, yeah, but we do have time. The fire is not here yet. So we do have time to gather things. What would you regret having left behind knowing that you had the time to grab it? And I was like, my laptop, because it has my book on it. And I am really bad at backing things up. My book is on my laptop. And then I also have my printed out version of my latest draft of my book. And <laughs> all of the beta reader feedback that I spent nine months organizing and putting into a printout version. And I grabbed those because I was like, to me, these are priceless. The work that went into them is not something that I want to have to do again. And the things that I grabbed were, <coughs> oh man, <coughs> smells so strongly of smoke. Talking right now is actually <coughs> making my throat really dry. <coughs> this really does feel like the end of the world, yuck. Oh my gosh, it's so much worse out here. In my house, we're surrounded by trees and I think that's really filtered out a lot of this smoke and ash. And now that I'm getting more into like the downtown area, it's, it's like, I don't even have my AC on, but it's still coming through. Anyways, um, as I was saying, what do you grab? So I already had like the essentials, like my clothes. And, and so beyond essential is what I'm talking about. What are your like priceless valuables? And of course we grabbed our documentation, you know, like birth certificates and things like that. We have all of those in a file box. Patrick grabbed his favorite guitar and pictures he has of his dad that are he would never be able to get again because his dad just passed away. And even now I'm thinking like, okay, beyond my book, my family members and my animals, is there anything else that I left behind that I would really regret? And I couldn't think of anything in the moment and even now I can't think of anything. And I'm sure there are things. That was kind of eye-opening to me to be like, okay, when your life boils down to its most important parts, what are they? And for me, it's my family and my pets and my writing. It's interesting that my writing was up there so high on my priority list in a fire. Oh man, this looks like Armageddon out here. And if you don't know what it normally looks like around here, maybe this doesn't look as crazy on camera as it looks in real life, but normally this is just lush green and I can see rolling hills and vineyards really far out. And man, this is just really crazy. It's so dingy. And yet, I'm still going to work. <laughs> so I guess my question, <laughs> I can't talk. So I guess my question for you guys is, in a fire, if you had to evacuate, but you had two hours to grab everything you need and get out, what do you grab? Golf course, I can't believe people are golfing. You crazy people, go home, why are you golfing in this? I can't even breathe in my car. People are crazy. Anyways, do you have an emergency plan? I feel like that's an important thing, especially right now because the world seems to be ending. <laughs> like maybe it's a good idea to have an emergency plan. My sister in Washington sent us, while we were trying to pack everything, she sent us this really helpful list that was like, if you only have 15 minutes to get out of your house in an emergency, and it had a list of all the essentials for you to grab, because in that moment, it can be hard to think about it. Like, what do I even need? I don't know, because you feel kind of panicky. So it was nice to have a list to be like, okay, yeah, that would be important. Get some clothes, get some sturdy shoes that I can run in if I need to. So that was cool. I'll link it down below if I can. Man, look out that window. Can you see that? It looks like it's winter time and snowing or something, but nope, it's pretty warm out. It's summertime. Well, end of the summer, it's almost fall because it's September, but anyways, I am at work now. So think about what I said, I guess if you want, whatever. Two weeks old tomorrow and they are so much bigger. Can't believe how fast they grow. They're already too big for the box that I brought them home in. Oh, 
Where do you think you're going? <laughs> Pamela's yeah. Patty. Hmm? Ooh, they get squirrel treats what? now? One of what? them what? was working on eating. Oh, did you drop what? it? One of them was practicing holding food and eating it. Hello. Would you like to be first? The squirrels have been getting so big lately that we eventually had to build this squirrel cage for them because they are crawling on everything and every time we opened the door they would jump out and be jumping all over the room climbing on things. So they've been enjoying this little squirrel cage. It's got some branches in there and a little nest. It's been almost a week, a week tomorrow that we've been living under this smoky haze. It's disgusting. I can taste it in my mouth. It's like they've got this metallic ashy taste that you just can't escape from. It was supposed to rain today and we can't see the sky so I have no idea if it's cloudy today or sunny. Just no clue. big reason that I got ducks was to give me something to wake up for in the morning <laughs> and so far it's worked I do get up early to let the ducks out I needed something a living thing to be relying on me any other thing that I have tried to make myself get up early my writing exercise any of those things that I do for myself just haven't been working lately pretty much ever since quarantine started I've just been having a really hard time getting up early with the ducks I know that they're waiting on me and especially because they're babies they can only go so long without food and water and I lock them up at night so they'll be safe and in the morning they can hear the rooster crowing when my grandma lets him out and I know that if I don't get up and let them out they're just going to be in there all the time or my grandma is going to feel obligated to take care of them and I do not want my grandma to feel obligated to take care of them because they are my ducks. That feels motivating enough to get me out of bed at 7 in the morning. But up to this point what I've been doing is I've been getting up at 7 in the morning, letting out the ducks and then you know making sure they have food and water and then going back to bed. Last night I sat down and I was going over my goals and I realized okay the whole purpose of getting ducks and getting up early was so that I could actually get stuff done in the morning before going to work. So I'm up this morning, I got dressed, and I'm going to exercise. Okay, so I just finished my workout and it was rough. Like I haven't really done a workout pretty much since the beginning of quarantine. It's been a few months, I'll just say that. It's been a few months since I've done a workout. I was running fairly regularly because I was preparing to run a half marathon with my mom and my sisters. And then we had the fires and air quality was so bad. It was in like the 700s one day. Our air quality was the worst in the world for like a week. So we couldn't exercise or go for a run or anything like that because it was just really bad. All we could do was sit inside our stuffy houses and not open the doors or windows. So I was just thinking about how I go through these phases of being really good about working out regularly and then phases of just not working out at all. And sometimes I give myself a hard time about that. But really, I guess what matters is that I do just keep getting back to it. And that's what's important. Even if you slack on your goals for a while, what matters is that you do get back to them, even if it's only for short stretches. So trying to give myself some grace there. And hopefully as I get up early and do exercises, I just have to give myself like really small goals that feel manageable. So instead of setting big lofty goals while I'm trying to get back into exercising, I just told myself, I just have to do 30 minutes every day. And it can be any kind of exercise, whatever I'm feeling up to that day, as long as it's some form of exercise. So today I did a pop sugar video on YouTube. Tomorrow, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but now I'm gonna take a shower and get ready for work. <laughs> My babies are all grown up. Two of them have started making little quacking sounds deep in their chest. <laughs> It just makes me so sad because, I mean, I'm like, it's really exciting to watch them get older, but it's really sad. 
too because they're not little babies anymore. They were not little babies for very long. But anyways, I am on my way out the door now to go to work. What? What are you growling about, huh? Oh, you want to go inside? Okay. Actually, I'm closing this vlog now because it's not even September anymore. And to be honest, I have no idea what footage is even going to be in this month's vlog because mm, I've been just kind of scattered this whole month. I had all these videos that I wanted to make and post throughout the month, but I think the only video I've posted is my August vlog. And now September's over. <laughs> so yeah. Like I don't even know what my channel is anymore because I haven't been writing and it's supposed to be a writing channel. Yesterday as I was working, one of the sons of the family that I work for is a writer and so we were talking about that. I was like, you're a writer, hey, I'm a writer. And I felt this little like pang of guilt when I called myself a writer because I know that I haven't really written anything in since July. I even had the audacity to say, yeah, I have a writing channel on YouTube. And immediately after I said that, I felt another pang of guilt. I'm really sorry that there hasn't been any writing this month in my writing vlog. So this is not a writing vlog, this is just a life vlog. And it may be the last vlog of this type that I will post to my channel, I think. Anyways, I am on my way to work, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that my content will become a little bit more writerly in the coming months, especially as now we're now in Preptober season and NaNoWriMo, and I'm really hoping to get back on the writing wagon and less on the lifestyle vlogging wagon in future videos. So stay tuned for that if that's what you're here for. Um, if you're like, I hate your writing videos and I would rather see your lifestyle videos, let me know that too. But I think most of you are really just here for the writing stuff. So I should keep my channel to that. Anyways, <laughs> that's enough. Closing up this vlog. Thank you guys so much. I love you and happy writing. Bye. Hey, would you come take a walk with me? Cross over the mountains, we'll reach the pale blue sea. I love.